So this is where we're at in the transaction, or this is where we're at in the deal. We've sold the vehicle, we've completed the title information, we've completed the bill of sale, and the title application form MV-6. Now you're gonna conduct a very easy electronic title registration. All new and used motor vehicle dealers must submit title applications electronically through the Georgia Electronic Title and Registration System, which we call ETR. I wanna repeat that. All new and used motor vehicle dealers must submit title applications electronically through the Georgia Electronic Title and Registration System, which we call ETR. And just as a side note, you know, county tag offices and MVD main offices no longer accept paper applications for title from dealers. Dealers' applications may only be accepted and processed electronically through ETR, okay? So you're gonna have to use what's called an approved ETR vendor, okay? Now there are a few ETR exceptions here, such as you see for disabled veterans, non-resident service members, IRP trucks and charter buses, vehicles that were sold to government entities, loaner vehicles, vehicles tied in, titled in a dealer name, or transactions that are exempt from TAVT, you know, and so by the way, those those exemptions would be processed at the purchaser's county tag office, but the majority of scenarios, uh, you will be using ETR. And here you see a list of approved electronic title registration vendor, vendors, or what we refer to as ETR providers. So these are software providers, and you will need to choose one of these providers to allow you to use the electronic title registration system. So there's several of them there. And you know, I wanna show you the homepage of each one of these ETR vendors website. Here you see uh, currently at the time this video is being filmed here, these are the current providers. Here you see CVR, here you see dealer track. Next you see a company called DDI Technology. Now you see a company called DLR DMV. And finally you see AutoPoint. So once you receive your dealer's license, you're gonna to need to choose one of these companies to process your electronic title registrations. You know, or if you're a currently licensed dealer, then you're already using ETR. These software programs are very, very easy to use. And I wanna share some screenshots with you here of one of the vendors just to show you how easy it is to use. And just about every ETR program that you would use, regardless of the software vendor, is gonna be very similar to this. So uh, to get started, most of these programs, you're gonna click on the new ETR deal, like you see right here, okay? So remember, we've completed the transaction and now we're doing our mandatory title application for the customer for that vehicle we just sold. So you're gonna enter, you're gonna click on new ETR deal and you're gonna enter your dealership name. And if you want to, you can put a deal number in there. If you are using a separate dealer management software program, which is referred to as a DMS, then the dealer management software, you can import that information. But for this training scenario, let's say we're not using a dealer management software, so we would just enter this information manually, okay? So you're gonna enter whether the customer paid for the vehicle with cash. If the customer obtained a loan, you would select finance or select lease deal if the vehicle was leased. Check whether a trade was taken, if the vehicle is rented, and if you are financing the vehicle directly to the customer, then you're gonna select buy here, pay here, okay? Then you'll enter the exact sale date, the trade-in amount if applicable, the sales price, and the book value. And then you're gonna enter the vehicle information for the vehicle you just sold. So you're gonna enter the VIN, or the state of the issue of the title, the year, make, and model, and the odometer reading. And remember, all this information is on that form uh, MV-6 or the bill of sale. So you've got all that information, to go ahead and finish this title registration here, okay? So you'll enter that information there. Uh, like I said, you'll put the exact odometer reading and the title number, as you see right there, pretty self-explanatory, uh, you know, and then as you scroll down here through it, you're going to enter your uh, business name and you're also gonna put the residential address of the person that is purchasing the vehicle from here. And the great thing here too at the top, it takes you through the tab. So it shows you where to start, where to enter the vehicle information, the owner's information, there's lien information that you can easily input there as well. So this is a really, really, all these programs are really, really easy to use. And they're gonna be very, very similar to the information that you see, see right here. So if there's a loan on the vehicle, you can easily enter the lien holder right there as well.
And then you're going to see this really cool review page, and you definitely need to spend a little time on this. So this is going to show you, you know, uh, all of your dealership information, the sales date, the purchase price, the uh, VIN of the vehicle, the owner's information as well. Uh, and then finally, you're going to enter, like I said, that registration county, whether you're doing a title, a new plate and title, or a transfer plate and title. So, you know, if you took a trade in, you might be doing a transfer plate where the vehicle's coming off one vehicle, going onto the vehicle you just sold, or maybe the person just buying the vehicle outright without a trade, then you'd be clicking new title, a new plate and title. And then you're going to put your temporary operating permit number here, which I'll show you here in just a few moments, and then the insurance type. Uh, that's the proof of insurance that the customer has shown you. So finally, you're going to click on pinned ETR deal to submit this electronic title registration. And the great thing about this, uh, these software programs, they won't allow you to submit an unfinished deal. You will literally have to complete all the steps before you're able to do this. So it, it really doesn't allow you to make mistakes. Okay, so that's a great thing about this. So when you're ready to submit the electronic title application, you'll click pinned ETR deal. And then you're gonna have the opportunity to print all the documents. So when you click on the eForms tab at the top of the page, you can just click on print selected packs to easily print up all your dealer docs. You know, regardless of the ETR vendor you use, they're gonna work very similar to this process uh, that I just showed you. So, you know, you can print those packs up. And I, as I've said several times during the course, you're never gonna to have too much paperwork, okay? So you always wanna document everything that you do. Document, document, document. You know, you will never have too much paperwork. So I strongly encourage you to go ahead and print up all this paperwork uh, while you're doing that electronic title registration. And this will also show proof that you did uh, do as what was required by law and apply for that customer's title within 30 days of this date of the sale, okay? You can find a link to the vendors, once again, at georgiadealer.com. Just go to the Georgia Dealer Forms link. And once again, you can scroll down and you're gonna see your electronic title registration vendors. Those are your ETR vendors. You will need to choose one of these vendors to work with once you've received your dealer's license. This is mandatory, okay? You know, you can also view some really great ETR training videos at the dealer, Georgia Dealer dot com website and anytime after the course i always want you to be aware that you can easily go to georgiadealer.com and click on the videos link right there and easily review all the information that we have just covered next i want to show you a very important component of your business which is called a temporary operating permit or top okay a dealer is required to issue an official temporary operating permit for every vehicle sold to a customer I want to repeat that very important information. A dealer is required to issue an official temporary operating permit for every vehicle sold to a customer. So here you see this mandatory doc that we're going to complete next. I guess you call it a document. Uh, it's a temporary license plate, I guess is what you're going to call it. So this is a temporary operating permit. Sometimes we call them a top for temporary operating permit. Dealers are required to issue temporary operating permits for use on newly purchased vehicles during the 45 days the customer has to register. Now remember, a dealer must register and title the vehicle within 30 days of the sale. So you have to register the vehicle through ETR within 30 days of the date of the sale. However, the temporary operating permit that you issue on that vehicle that was sold is good for 45 days. So once again, remember, you must register the vehicle through ETR within 30 days of the date of the sale. However, the temporary operating permit that you issue on that vehicle is good for your customer for 45 days. So here's some guidelines that you need to be aware of first, okay? First of all, a temporary operating permit may only be placed on a vehicle that you sold, okay? You can't just place one on a brother-in-law's car that didn't buy a vehicle from you. They can only be placed on vehicles that are sold by you, okay? You may never charge for a temporary operating permit. I wanna repeat that, very important statement. A dealer may never charge any fee for a temporary operating permit. You have to provide them to the customer at no charge. This is a law. You can only issue one. You cannot issue a duplicate. And once again, they may only be placed on a vehicle that's been sold by the dealers. Dealers cannot issue an extension or an additional temporary operating permit, nor can the customer operate the vehicle with, a, with an expired temporary operating permit. You know, for some reason, the dealer failed to obtain a title for transfer to the buyer's name. Uh, you know, within five days of the expiration of the temporary operating permit, the customer can apply for a 30-day 
TOP at their county tag office, okay? But they'd be required to turn in the old top. They have to show proof of ownership and uh, also have to complete a separate form to do that. That would be on the uh, buyer's part, okay? But once again, you know, uh, as you see here, this is a temporary operating permit. And I want to kind of talk about the components of this temporary operating permit, which is like a temporary license plate, okay? So at the top there, you can see it says Georgia temporary license, and then the VIM, and then the large number you see here is the temporary operating permit number. So it's also gonna have a barcode off to the left there for law enforcement. You know, they can use a barcode reader if they pull the driver over uh, to make sure that's a current and not a counterfeit TOP. Then the expiration date's at the top which is gonna be 45 days from the date that you sold that vehicle to your customer. And then you see the Georgia State Seal, then the year, make, model, and color of the vehicle. And below that, you're gonna see your dealership name and address. And then you're gonna see an area for what's known as your temporary operating permit sticker that I'm gonna talk about here in just a moment. So, so you're gonna print uh, the temporary operating permit with your own paper and then apply a temporary operating permit uh, sticker at the bottom of the temporary operating permit. Okay, so speaking of that, so how do you print these up? You can use your own paper, but the state does have some guidelines when it comes to the paper that you're using to print up your temporary operating permit. Okay, the stock that you use must be the same size as a state issued license plate. It's got to be like of a heavy stock paper to resist deterioration or fading, you know, due to exposure to weather conditions. Uh, it has to have that rectangular box centered at the bottom, and that's where you're going to adhere your official temporary operating permit sticker. And I'll show you how to get those here in just a moment. So the paper that you use has to be either white or light colored background, and it has to contain a delaminating feature that would, you know, if removed, uh, you know, destroy the temporary operating permit. So it has to be able to repeal commercially available inks and marking pens, and it has to reflect your dealership name and the address in the spaces around that temporary operating permit sticker. Now, I want to cover what's illegal when it comes to, you know, prohibited prohibited temporary operating permits scenarios. You know, when a dealer may not use a temporary operating ter temporary when a dealer may not use a temporary operating permit. There I got it at that time. You may not issue multiple TOPs per vehicle provider. You cannot extend or renew the temporary operating permit beyond the initial expiration date. You cannot put it on a vehicle that's registered under what's known as the International Registration Plan. That's an IRP. You cannot put one on a, demo, on a demonstrator or for an employee's use or for transporting vehicles from location to another. Or you can never have the words tag applied for. I want to I want to make sure and repeat that. You can never use a temporary operating permit that says tag applied for. That's illegal in the state of Georgia. So you can never have similar statements on the TOP. You know. When the dealer's primary business is the sale of salvage vehicles, they can never use a temporary operating permit, okay? So obviously on a junk vehicle or something like that. And once again, you can never place a temporary operating permit on a vehicle that was not sold by your dealership. You can never issue a temporary operating permit on a non-self-propelled vehicle, such as a trailer, etc. And remember, one more very important law regarding temporary, temporary operating permits, you can never charge the customer a fee for the temporary operating permit. You're required by law to provide a temporary operating permit on the vehicle at no charge to the customer. Now, the state also has some storage and shipping requirements for temporary operating permits. Your TOPs must be stored in a secure area that is not visible or accessible to the general public, okay? So yeah, the, the delivery of shipment or shipment of TOPs must be secure and any TOP delivery must be traceable from the point of origin to the point of delivery. Okay, so now I have explained those temporary operating permit guidelines. Next, I want to show you how to print a temporary operating permit, which can easily be done in the same software program that you're using for your electronic title registrations. Remember, just a few moments ago, I showed you how to easily register the vehicle you sold. Well, you can use that same software to easily print up your customer's temporary operating permit. When logged on to your ETR software account, you're usually gonna click something that says new TOP deal, like you see here on the screen. So you'll enter your dealership name. You can enter a deal number if you want. You'll enter the sale date if you're not already showing the VIN. You can enter the title status and the customer info. And if you already completed this information a moment ago, it's gonna just auto-populate all this information when you're printing up the temporary operating permit, okay? 
So once again, you'll enter the county where the customer lives and the TOP number if it's not already auto-populated. And then you'll easily click the print temporary tag and your temporary operating permit will be printed automatically and is ready for you to apply your temporary operating permit sticker and attach the temporary operating permit to the vehicle that you just sold your customer just a few moments ago. Pretty easy, wouldn't you agree? Uh, once again, here's your ETR vendors for software you can use for the electronic title registration and to create your mandatory temporary operating permits. So now just a moment ago, I talked about placing a temporary operating permit sticker on that temporary operating permit. So remember, you're gonna print up that temporary operating permit and you're required to place on that temporary operating permit your mandatory temporary operating permit sticker, okay? Now, you're gonna attach this sticker directly to that temporary operating permit and stickers can only be ordered from the following dealer associations, okay? So you can either get a temporary operating permit sticker from the George Automobile Dealers Association. Once again, their phone number is 770-432-1658. They're at GADA.com. Or you can get your temporary operating permit stickers from the Georgia Independent Dealers Association. Once again, there's their contact information, 800-472-8101, GIADA.com. So I recommend contacting them as soon as you receive your license, or you know, if you're a currently licensed dealer, you can order additional stock either from either one of these associations. Next, I wanna talk about dealer license plates. And here you see a sample dealer Georgia license plate, a Georgia dealer license plate. I want you to be aware of how to use your dealer license plates correctly. As a Georgia dealer, you know, you might be issued dealer license plates. The state of Georgia has very strict guidelines for dealers and they must follow certain rules and guidelines when using dealer license plates. So first, I wanna talk about the legal use of your dealer license plates. They may be placed on vehicles in inventory being demonstrated to potential buyers or maybe transporting vehicles from one location to another on dealership vehicles being used by officers or employees. And by the way, if an employee is using one, they must work at least 36 hours per week. So there's the legal use of your dealer license plate. But I think more importantly, I want to focus on the illegal use of dealer license plates, okay? They may never be placed on privately owned vehicles. They can only be placed on vehicles basically that are held in your inventory. They may never be placed on vehicles that are leased or for hire, say for example, on a commercial vehicle, you could never ever put them on a commercial vehicle and that's a vehicle you're providing a service and someone's paying you for that service. They can never be placed on vehicles that are used in dealership operations like rentals or delivery, parcel delivery, towing, rollbacks, courtesy vehicles. And I wanna talk about that, okay? Just to give you a scenario of this, you know, you can use your dealer's license and go into a dealer auction and you can buy that beautiful three quarter ton truck, okay? And you can put a dealer plate on it, bring it back to your dealership, and that's a demo. So you can allow customers to test drive that because it's a demo. But what you could never do in the meantime, say for example, is decide to start hauling cars back and forth from the dealer auction with a dealer plate on that because once you start hauling cars back and forth from the dealer auction, that is no longer a demo. It basically becomes a service vehicle. There's, you're using it to service the dealership. So in that scenario, you'd have to register that vehicle and pay taxes on it. So keep this in mind, you can never ever haul another vehicle behind a dealer license plate. So keep this in mind, You can, if you got a dealer license plate on a vehicle, you're not hauling anything, you're not towing anything. Also, if you're ever providing a loaner or what's known as a courtesy vehicle, you can't put a dealer plate on a courtesy vehicle. You would have to register that uh, in your name as well. Maybe you're, maybe you're delivering parts or something like that. You cannot do that with a dealer license plate. That, once again, becomes a service vehicle, okay? So you can never, uh, you know, place a dealer plate on what's known as a service vehicle or, you know, like I said, for hire. You can't put it on a commercial vehicle, you know? You can't say, for example, uh, you know, put it on some truck that you just own, that you just bought, and start charging other persons to deliver vehicles across the country for you or something like that. That would absolutely not be allowed because that's, that's for hire, which is called a commercial vehicle. So you can never provide a service to someone with a vehicle that has a dealer license plate on it. That's a commercial vehicle and you'd have to pay your sales tax on that, okay? Uh, you know, they may never be placed on vehicles that are used by friends or family members of employees, you know, okay? Just always, always uh, keep that in mind. Now, 
Sometimes you might need to get replacement dealer license plates. And if I can give you just a little bit of advice here, I strongly encourage you to never ever leave a dealer license plate on a vehicle, on one of your demos, on your lot overnight, because it's gonna get stolen. Uh, thieves love dealer license plates. I guarantee you any motor vehicle thief out there would love to get a hold of one of your dealer license plates, okay? So if you ever do need to replace a dealer license plate, uh, you know, make sure that you have this process that is followed. Okay, you have to, if you do have the old plate, if it was damaged, you have to turn that back in with a notarized affidavit. Uh, the plate number would have to be listed on the report and they were, the, the, the state's going to charge you $12 for that. So do keep, please keep that in mind. Like I said, if you leave dealer plates on your demos overnight, uh, you're going to be reporting a lot of them stolen uh, because like I said, thieves love your d -tags. So I, I strongly encourage you, you know, Maybe you've got them on a, a a demo that you're using. Well, take that thing off there and put it into a file cabinet during the night or something like that. So otherwise you will get them stolen and you'll be replacing those dealer license plates a lot. Keep a tight hold on your dealer license plates. And by the way, you can never ever loan them out. You know, when you first got in your license or maybe you've been a licensed dealer for 20 years, you could have a relative that asks you to borrow a demo or a dealer plate. I mean, that is strictly prohibited under law. Never ever loan out a dealer plate or a demo to like, uh, you know, a brother-in-law or something like that, okay? Next, I wanna talk about authorized agents because authorized agents can act on a dealer's behalf. But if you do have an authorized agent acting on your behalf, and that's gonna be somebody that's maybe using a, a, a demo with a dealer license plate or something like that, you're gonna to have to complete form MV-6A, okay? And you've always gotta make sure all that information on any authorized agent is current. And if for some reason, if you ever go out of business, which I don't think that you will, uh, you know, the dealer plates must be returned to uh, to the state. Okay, so keep, please keep this in mind. And real quickly on that, on that note, the reason I believe that you're not gonna go out of business is because this can be a very high markup industry. This can be a very high profit industry. And normally, the reason I see a dealer go out of business is because they've gotten into too much debt. So whether you're just getting ready to get your license or maybe you've been a licensed dealer for several years, you know, as you're aware, there are a lot of companies out there that want to loan you money to buy vehicles for your lot. And these are, these are called floor plans, okay? And I can almost guarantee you, you can walk into any dealer auction anywhere and get a $250,000 floor plan because nothing, nothing against the dealer auctions. But if you think about this, you know, the dealer auction has absolutely nothing to lose to give you a $250,000 loan for your inventory because if you don't pay your floor plan, they can just come and repossess those vehicles and sell them through the dealer auction next week to somebody else that got their first floor plan, okay? So I wanna strongly encourage you, always keep your debt low. I've lost count of the times that I've helped somebody get a license and I'll drive by their new lot and I'll see 50 cars out there on the lot right after they've started and there's balloons flying all over the place and salespersons run on all over the place. And then I'll drive by a month later and that lot is empty and there's a for sale sign or a for lease sign in the building. And there's normally only one reason that happened because that dealer could not pay their floor plan. So the floor plan company came repossess the vehicle and put them out of, out of business. So keep your debt low, whether you're getting your license for the first time, maybe you've been a licensed dealer for 20 years, you know, keep your debt low. I don't want to discourage you from getting a floor plan, but get a small floor plan starting out. Or if you're a currently licensed dealer, you know, hopefully you've been in business for a long time and know that you got to pay down that debt. You know, you got to pay down that debt. And for every dealer, if I can give you a little bit of uh, advice here, I strongly encourage you to have a goal of having a cash inventory. Because if you don't owe any money on your inventory, then you, you're you gonna keep a lot more money in your pocket. And by the way, a floor plan is a credit card. There's no difference between that. And I see floor plans kill dealers all the time. So once again, if you go out of business, you've gotta return your dealer plates to the state, okay? So do please keep that in mind. And you know, you have to keep uh, you know updated on all of your authorized agents. So please keep that in mind. And when you're filling out this form, this is MV, this is form mv dash. 6A, okay, and once again, you can download all these forms, but all the information needs to be kept current, and your, keep your authorized agent list and your company's name and address current with all your uh, records, okay? So if you do ever need to add or delete an agent, you can certainly do that with MV-6. So do please keep that in mind. Also, uh, you know, as a side note here, as you're filling this out, you just wanna make sure and fill it out correctly for each person 
that is an authorized agent. And then you're going to sign that at the bottom as well. And then you need to state that you're a motor vehicle dealer. Okay. So do please, do please keep that in mind. That form is pretty self-explanatory here, uh, but you need to make sure that you complete it correctly. And if you do need to download that form, it's going to be there at georgiadealer.com. Don't forget that georgiadealer.com and just click on the dealer forms. And down there at the bottom of the dealer forms page, you'll be able to easily download your dealer license application, your dealer plate application, your dealer renewal. When you're renewing your license, you can easily do that or the dealer agent application as well. So, you know, also I want you to be aware once in a while, you might need to order additional plates. Okay. So, uh, normally when you're starting out, you can get your one plate and a couple of additional plates. But if you need additional more than that, or if you're a currently licensed dealer and you're really having a large sales year, you are allowed to order additional dealer plates, but you'll need to complete form MV-6. This is this form right here. If you do need additional plates, uh, you know, more than the standard issue. If you need additional plates because you're having a big year, you can certainly order additional dealer plates. Just remember, you've got certain guidelines on those dealer plates. It's very important that you follow the rules, you know, and I can almost guarantee you on your dealer plates, you are going to see other dealers that are breaking the rules. You know, I've seen, I've seen trucks that have a three quarter, a three quarter ton truck with a dealer plate on it, hauling a flatbed trailer that has a dealer plate in on it, hauling a car they just purchased at the dealer auction because it still has dealer auction stickers on it. You're going to see scenarios like this and those dealers are using their dealer plates illegally. So make sure and do exactly what the course says here. And that way you'll be able to keep your dealer license plates a lot longer than the dealers that are breaking the rules. So once again, as a reminder, when selling a vehicle and a title is required, the dealer is required to apply for the customer's new title within 30 calendar days. A dealer is also required to issue an official temporary operating permit for every vehicle sold to the customer. And remember, you've got to follow strict guidelines for the use of your dealer plate. So once again, if you want to review these videos, just go to georgiadealer.com and click on the videos link at the top of every page.